up today on Locked On Texas Tech. We're back into Portal Watch for Grant McCaslin and the Red Raiders. Is there an option we previously scratched off the list that we might need to pencil back in? We'll get into it next on Locked On Texas Tech. You are Locked On Texas Tech, your daily podcast on the Texas Tech Red Raiders. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Great to be with you again on Locked On Texas Tech on the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day, always free and available on YouTube or anywhere you get podcasts. We appreciate you for making us your first listen. And today's episode brought to you by Game Time. Download the Game Time app, create an account, and use our code Locked On College for $20 off of your first purchase with the only Chris Level. I'm Casey Cowan. Chris, great to be back with you as we wrap up the week, head on into the weekend. And few different things to dive into on today's episode. We will get to a football edition for Texas Tech and an edition of a variety that could be nearing an extinction event. Sounds exciting, right? We'll explain in just a moment. But uh, first, I've got to wrap up the week. I feel like I've let this sit and simmer to a degree, at least for like, what, 24 hours or so. I haven't hounded you with questions about the uh, basketball portal and Grant McCaslin and the Red Raiders. Uh, I have there on the screen, Simmering Hoops Portal, sort of on the back burner, I guess, to a degree as we are awaiting some timelines to come to a conclusion, some further options to be revealed, decisions to be made. You know, they say a watched pot never boils, but I can't look away. I'm sorry. It's probably my fault that hasn't come to a boil yet because I'm locked in on this son of a gun. Don't pardon that pun the unintentional rhyme master in the building with us today. Uh, So, Chris, where do we stand as we wrap up this week? I know we've still got some NBA timetables, I guess we're considering to a degree. And as we also talked about a couple of days ago, uh, you got a new assistant coach now in the mix officially for Coach McCaslin with the addition of uh, Jeff Linder. So wondering about some conversations taking place there as well. So what's uh, the lay of the landscape as we sit here today? The analogy I've, I think I've used this before with you the the duck on the pond, yeah, and it's just smooth glass, you know, and it's like man, it's so you know night. And then if if you had an underwater view, <laughs> that duck paddling like crazy underneath, okay, the water, um, but doesn't show it to you know outwardly, right? And I think that's that's very much Grant McCaslin, Kellen Buffington. Uh, Luke Barnwell, uh, Matt Breyer, Jeff Linder, Coach AC, all, all, all the folks over there. I think it's about to get fairly active here rather quickly. <clears throat> so you've, you've got you've got a couple of layers here. You want NBA Combine layer, or you want like door number two? Well, we can get the NBA Combine layer out of the way first. Door number <laughs> okay. two does sound exciting, though. Okay, <clears throat> I uh, I think that. So this combine, the the NBA combine has been going on and, you know, for the last uh, several days, don't exactly know how many, but it it, it wraps up, I think either Saturday or early Sunday, Uh, it's it's some point over the weekend, it it is done. And, and how this works for an NBA prospect is that, okay, if you've, if you showed up here and if you have played well. You could have played your way into the first round, out of the first round, higher up in the first round, dropped yourself, whatever. And and the way it works, there's a lot of what I would term fringe prospects, okay, that are fringe draft picks, which is the group that we're going to talk about here. And there could be some on this particular list. You know, some are at the combine, and they don't have an option to go back to college. So they are putting – Best foot forward. They have no choice. It's either it's either this, maybe get second round pick, undrafted free agent, G League, overseas, whatever. That's what they're looking at. But there's a lot of guys that are there with college eligibility remaining, which is why we we are bringing this uh, topic up right now. But the way that that combine works, if you have the option to return to college, you are looking for a promise from a team, a general manager, and they are going to say to you, some of them are no-brainers, like Jacoby Walter, Yev Misi, the two kids from Baylor, for example. They are thought to be lottery picks, but but pretty much guaranteed to be first round, okay, based on what I've read. 
they, they, they don't need a promise or they don't, they're not, you know, there, there's, I don't think they're coming back to college. I think that ship has sailed and uh, you can, you can <laughs> say, say goodbye, but there are, there are those like the, 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 the group of players that we may be kind of looking at going, well, okay, what are you going to do? They are looking for a promise from a general manager, a team to say, Hey man, we got pick number 18. We've liked what you've done this week. We like you so much that if you are there at 18, we we are going to promise you right now and your agent that if you're there, we will select you and you will not fall fall further from 18, i.e. don't pull out of the draft. Stay in. You're, yeah. you're going to get picked. <clears throat> I'm, I'm, I'm sure it's happened uh, because if you're a pick 18 and like somebody drops th- that you just were like, had no idea that was going to be there. And you're like, dude, I know we promised you, but we didn't think he was going to be here. You know, I I don't know how that goes, but it's tricky for a general manager to make a promise to an agent and then renege because guess what? You're not dealing with that guy's players anymore going forward. You wouldn't think. Okay. So, so there, there's how kind of how that works. You have players like, uh, let's just toss some names out here because I think it could get real interesting quickly. Um, I, I think people have, uh, you, you know, attached themselves to the name of Jalen Wells, uh, you know, West Coast center that, you know, played in the Pac-12 last year. I think people have kind of tried to connect a few dots there with Texas Tech. I think that that's very fair to connect those dots. Uh, I think he is in play at some level. I, I think that odds are he is coming back to college somewhere. I think there is also a, a prospect by the name of Coleman Hawkins, the big center out of the University of Illinois, that I, I think there is some some Texas Tech interest. I think there there is very much, um, you know, that potentially could be in, in the works. Uh, I don't know of necessarily the tie there, but he's an option, okay? He's an option. And that brings us to a name that <clears throat> we have talked about a lot. I I could only I could only go off of the information that I had at the time. I'm not so certain that JT Toppin is going to be a Longhorn anymore. Oh man, I'm close to a spit take. You caught me right in a sip of coffee. It's just too hot. But uh, okay, yeah, I'm I'm not ready to call that one uh, over with. Uh, he's from Dallas. There are a lot of connections to Texas Tech. I think he's had a pretty good combine, and so I just uh, again head on a swivel season. But I think mm-hmm. something happens here. With some, with one of these three guys, I don't, I don't foresee a situation where you can take multiple from this group or multiple like NBA combine type guys. Okay, yeah. Uh, but I think something could happen here, you know, fairly quickly once names come out of the combine and they say I'm coming back to college. Then it's like game on. And I think legwork has been done on a lot of this from both sides of it. There are, there are. Agents or or the, the the folks that are trying to help these players at this combine, trying to figure out, do I have a promise from one of these GMs, and how many soft places do I have to land back in college? What, what that might what, what might that look like? What does that NIL look like? What is the positional fit, the scheme fit, the locational fit, the the whatever you want to get into? Uh, so all that is, is gone on, but I, I think something could happen fairly quickly. And I, I, I don't want to, you know, say that I think you're going to get one of these three. It's just not going to shock me. And I think, um, I, I'll just emphasize to you that I think that I was, I guess, wrong or, or again, maybe right at the time that I said it, when we kind of hinted at, I think that JT Toppa may be going to Austin not necessarily anymore. So we'll just kind of see where it goes. And there could be a fourth, fifth, sixth option because you you have to sure. get a big. And I think you're you're trying to shop from the big pool right now. Uh and and the big pool is about to the pool has kind of been closed because they've been combining, but the pool's about to be open and I think you're going to throw a hook in the water and I think you're going to try to see if one of these, you know, cuz cuz the 
one of these guys is going to be one of, if not the best addition that you have to your team based on their, I mean, NBA combine access and like where they're kind of at. I mean, you're, you're talking potential draft pick here. If you add one of these guys to your roster and it would fit like a glove, uh, you know, four to five man score rebounder, all, all, all the things, athleticism, experience all, all these guys would kind of check those boxes there's some other guys up there too that i i would say these are just top of mind awareness guys these three of them but uh th- their names needed to be mentioned because i think they are clearly an option for texas tech and others that still need something here but uh yeah i i and i'd be willing to bet you that texas tech's wish list is jt top and one and one a there but i think that jalen wells or coleman hawkins or one of these other guys would absolutely be a a nice you know fallback too if you could you, you know whatever and I I, I mean I, I'm not I, that's just my assumptions because Toppin's got so many things like you know with with the proximity you know his, his teammates are already going to walk on here he's from Dallas there's clearly some relationships there so anyway I'll just uh, I'll, I'll leave it there uh, very interesting to say the least and. Uh... Sounds like I'm going to continue to watch this pot for a boil through the weekend and uh, into next week, maybe even closer than I have been uh, and, over the last few days. But, and, uh, and, and I get the, I get the, I think it's a great point you made. You know, it's like people want to have wanted something to happen. Yes. You're watching all these preseason polls. You're not really in them. It's like you, you're, you have an incomplete team. Uh, I, uh, I think that. I guess there's been a level of frustration, but what did I tell you the last time we talked about this? Grant McCaslin would tell everybody, please trust us. We will find a way. You got to find a way, however you want to phrase that, but trust us. And and judge this, judge this when this is all over and they they put their team together because they haven't put their team together. It's, a, it's still, you know, being assimilated. So uh, I, I think uh, he's earned that right. And, and last year it took a while too. Uh, it's just that I, I, and I, but I get the the fan out there and the listener out there, the viewer out there that they're paying attention to us or is on redraidersports.com or another medium like that. It's like, oh man, I, I'm, I want it now. I want my cake. I want all the icing. I want to have it. And like, we're, I want to play with my toy and let's go. What's going on. And, but it's just, sometimes this takes a bit, but I think you're, you're, you're close. Oh yeah. No, we're, we're glad for those uh, fans short for fanatics uh, <laughs> being out there. So interested to the tune. I'm looking right now of a hoops uh, transfer portal thread on red that has 12,000 replies and almost 700,000 views. Um, so yeah, we're that that's not happening everywhere. <laughs> so we're glad for those out there either in that mix or uh, other mixes elsewhere that are paying close attention. So uh, we may have something coming to a boil very, very soon. So make sure you're subscribing to Locked on Texas Tech so you don't miss it whenever that happens on YouTube or anywhere you get podcasts. Okay, we'll stick with the uh, personnel department. Let's go ahead and transition into another sport, however, because Joey McGuire and the Red Raider football program had an addition, Chris, and this one's pretty interesting. First, today's episode brought to you by Game Time. Never sweat buying tickets to your favorite events again with Game Time. It's always a breeze using the Game Time app where you're going to find the best last minute deals. And I love being able to scout out a view from any seat before pulling the trigger. And of course, it's always at the lowest price, guaranteed. Game Time has deals on tickets right up to the start of the event and even an hour after it begins, which means you can finish off that last beer at the tailgate at your own pace because Game Time is the place to find last-minute seats to any event. They give you the fastest and easiest way to buy tickets, but not just fast and easy, also secure and simple to use. So right now, download the Game Time app and create an account and use the promo code Locked on college for $20 off your first purchase. Terms apply. Again, create an account and redeem our promo code locked on college for $20 off. Download the Game Time app today for last minute tickets at the lowest price. Guaranteed. A kid by the name of uh, Michael Harrison Plot, MHP pilot, I'm sorry, um, is now a Red Raider and was a fairly decorated prospect. Coming out of Temple, Texas, the class of 2023 is going to be transferring from Houston. But 
Uh, man, at the time, had offers all over the country, was listed as a wide receiver at that point in time. I'm seeing a defensive back future uh, in red and black, if I'm not mistaken. But uh, if I am, correct me and, and tell me more about uh, how this came to be and uh, the variety in which he will join the Texas Tech roster. Yeah, th this has been in the works for, uh, eh, you know, a, a few weeks-ish. Uh, I, I think, you know, kind of the – the process, the flirtation, the recruitment, however you want to, you know, the feeling out process, whatever. Uh, I, I think, uh, you know, my MHP, I, I kind of, I've never seen that one before. Uh, you know, Michael Harrison pilot though, but it, it's like, he's just kind of MHP. And I, 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 that's a unique one. I, that's fun. So we'll just go with the MHP here for our purposes. Uh, he, I, I think he needed a change of scenery. I think there was a, a an injury at, at Houston and just, <laughs> as a coaching change and, and all those yeah. things. And sometimes things happen. There's not a fit, uh, whether it's, you know, just whether it, it, it's schematically or yeah, who, who the heck knows. And, and sometimes you need a you change of scenery. I think it's interesting that, uh, that where this young man is from uh, right there in central Texas in the temple area, because you've started to tap into a few of those uh, from the, that general area, Micah Hudson being the, the, the leader of the pack there. You, you also got another walk on in this category uh, back in December from that general area in uh, Javion Wilcox from TCU. But this is a player that well, he was a U.S. Army All-American. Uh, he was a four star prospect. Uh, I, I think it's uh, far from a finished product. I think that he was open minded to say, I, wh whether this is just in general or, hey, if this is what it takes to go to Texas Tech, this is what I'll do. But I think Texas Tech envisions him as a, uh, you know, a, a DB, but safety specifically. <clears throat> and I, I think you're kind of full at receiver. You've got a loaded roster there. You've also got a full recruiting class coming in th at that position. And I think that you 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 could, you know, m this could be like your equivalent to like, okay, this is our Cam Watts replacement. You know, if you want to, if you want to go that route, you know, had an experienced DB that leave the program. Now we're going to take a, a very talented young man that's going to be maybe raw uh, it, with the skill set here. And, and, you know, kind of grow him up and give him a chance and, and all those things. And so kind of we'll see what it go or where it goes. But uh, it's just, I mean, because you just think about this, Cowan. Also, as an aside, don't let me forget to mention door number two in our previous conversation. I don't want to forget that. I don't want to be accused of. Oh, I thought Toppin was door number two. That's my fault. Okay. Oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, no. There, okay. There's there's door number two. Um, that because again, it's kind of the same kind of conversation, but just adding players different ways or, you know, whatever, but think about what you've added football wise, Cowan on, on your football roster for, through the walk-on process. I mean, let's talk about some of these names right now. I mean, can Brown ring a bell to anybody? I mean, your backup quarterback was added via the walk-on Jason Llewellyn, former Alito stud went to Oklahoma and it needed a change of scenery. I watched him catch a touchdown pass in the red and black game. Gives you plenty of depth. He was one of the highest recruited tight ends in the country out of high school. Uh, Javion Wilcox, who we just mentioned a second ago, four-star DB out of that Temple area that went to TCU. He's like, I don't want to – it's not for me, man. And he's really good friends with Micah Hudson. He shows up via walk-on. Uh, you've had – what was our uh, young man last, uh, last week that we were talking about that we spent some time on the offensive line? Jackson Hughes uh, via the walk-on. Shout out to the softball team and the girlfriend there that uh, you know help <laughs> help help facilitate. Yeah. And now here you are with uh, MHP as it, as it would be. These are these are not just roster fillers. These are potential. You know, I, I don't know if I want to say like game changer, but like any of these guys listed on a regular recruiting class with the star rankings next to their names. Had you got them straight out of high school, you are looking at it going, these are some of the best signees in, in, in this particular class or that particular class. That's mm -hmm. what you're dealing with here. You're just getting them a year or a year and a half removed from, from coming out of high school uh, in, in most cases. So 
uh, I just think it's kind of fascinating right now. It's just a different way to, you know, to, to add, add players to your team. And I, I think it's in, in the NIL era, it's, it's easier to facilitate adding a, a walk on than it used to be. Uh, what, whether it's, you know, the, the collective can help with school, the cost, because there's only so many scholarships to give, which is going to lead us to, to the next part of the, the conversation here, because some of this ability to add players this way could could be changing uh, and, and fairly soon. And it's kind of like shocking to even talk about it aloud. But I, I think it's a, a very, very real possibility. But because Joey has tapped into this way of doing it and is really I mean it's been very meaningful uh and I I I hope it doesn't uh go away on his ability to you know tap into to this way of of adding players to his roster yeah so on that front is it is it actually I have on the screen end of the walk-on era question mark yeah um is it actually the end of the walk-on era Mm. or is it just possibly the end of the ability to add walk-ons, say, of this caliber and via this kind of context. How would you how would you break down that part of it? First, today's episode brought to you by FanDuel, and it's do or die time in the NBA and NHL. And FanDuel has given you a shot to bring home a big win of your own. Right now, new customers get $150 in bonus bets with any winning $5 bet. That's $150 to bet on spreads, player props, money lines, and a whole lot more. So visit FanDuel.com slash locked on and make every playoff shot count with FanDuel, America's number one sports book. So there's a lot of national reporting out there. This this is going to be a, a, a bit of a – I do have to explain it. But this this really has to do with the, the House versus the NCAA case that is, is being negotiated, mediated, however you want to phrase that legally, that, that involves the revenue sharing component. If you, if you read a lot of the national reporting and if you dig deep into it, uh, and I've checked with some national folks that I'm like, am I reading this correctly? And they're like, yes, you are. Nobody ultimately knows exactly what this is going to look like. So we have to make that clear. However, I think I, I, as it was put to me, commissioners of these leagues have kind of been told to, to fill their coaches in uh, and athletic directors, administrators in on, on this is some of what could be in play here. And it's, and again, I, I have a hard time like still grasping it because I don't really understand. And again, nothing is settled yet, but this is the the part where you're going to get into the, you know, every school is going to owe $20 million a year. A lot of it's back pay that, you know, hey, because the, the government's saying you were running a business, you never paid taxes on it. You didn't pay your labor. They were employees, you know, that mm-hmm. kind of stuff. That's another conversation. However, part of what they are mediating or negotiating is the revenue sharing component. And some of what they're getting into is a roster limit in football. So I'll circle back that back to that in yeah. a second because that is pertinent for this conversation but then unlimited scholarships with with some sports and you're thinking well that's an oxymoron this is the same question i had <laughs> like unlimited or limit th- those seem you know uh like they're competing yeah, exactly yeah. <laughs> but they are basically saying that nfl has 53 guys on a team colleges you don't you don't need any more than 85 guys on a roster you've got 85 scholarships and so there, there is a lot of talk out there about, and I think that this could be in play as early as to the fall of 25. Wow. So f- 15 months away, yeah. if it were to happen, which is when everybody thinks the revenue sharing thing could be in play and all that stuff. They could say to you, 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 ha- you can have 85 guys on your team. I mean, right now, folks, D1 programs have 120. J- Joey McGuire's got 120. Some of which in that extra, you know, 35 players is some serious talent. Some of which we've talked about right here. So I don't understand how that's supposed to work. I don't know where these 35 players at every school, where they go. I don't, I don't really know what that's supposed to look like, but I'm just told to, 
you, you know, I mean, because I asked a couple of buddies that are they're writing about this nationally uh, on some platforms. And again, just asking for some clarification because it's like, am I, there's just no way I'm reading this correctly. And they're like, no, yes, you are. Again, nothing's been decided, but that's just the reality of kind of what you what could be coming down the road is that this is an avenue that may be taken away from not just you, but from everybody. And it, mm -hmm. boy, it will make a scholarship offer out of high school. And it, it, it would make uh, just having a scholarship on a roster now, you know, very valuable. Uh, it, you know, I mean, you, you have to be very careful about who you're offering and all. That. Anyway, it's just it. it it, it sparks a whole variety of different conversations that we could have. But for, for these purposes, this is kind of what uh, I, I think people would want to understand because I think Joey's tapped into this way of, you know, uh, adding talent to his team and, and has maximized it. And is it's been kind of fun to watch because you have Texas, you have relationships, kids want to come home. You are a great coaching staff. Your program's on the rise. You've got a fancy building that you're trying to open up. And all, all, all these kinds of things that you have advantages. And I think kids want to be a part of it. I mean, because I'm just going to tell you, if Tyree Wilson, if, if he's not too too proud to like walk on for a semester or whatever it was or nine months and, and be placed on scholarship a, a bit down because the, the, the team didn't have any, then it doesn't matter who you are. Because, uh, I mean, they're, I mean, for example, T.J. Watt, people ever heard of him? He walked on at Wisconsin, folks. That's one of the best defensive players in the NFL. It's just like crazy to me to, to that potentially could be taking this away as a, an access point for players to play. There's a lot of good players out there in the world, and it's just, I, I don't know. It, we'll have to have more conversations about this. And, and again, it's a hypothetical now, but go read some of this stuff, folks. I'm not just conjuring this up out of thin air, I can assure you. Well, and I'm just having flashbacks uh, for some reason of significant and seismic changes before that dramatically impacted uh, very successful programs. I know this is not apples to apples, but, uh, you know, I think of the way that, say, Nebraska used to build a roster. Absolutely. Uh, once upon a time, and then that yes. changes and they fall off a cliff. And I don't know if there's a great example of some other program out there that might uh, be in that kind of category here. But we've seen seismic changes before really dramatically impact the fortunes uh, of a program here or there. So something to keep an eye on. We only have a few minutes left, Chris, but uh, I definitely want to step back in. I thought already had my door number two price, That's but uh, you're telling me there's still something on the other side of door number two. So what are we talking here? I, uh, I will, uh, I will say that, you know, you have the three to four spots left, you know, to fill we've kind of indicated one of these is going to be filled with it with a big okay maybe yeah. maybe you get one of these guys from the combine that decides man i'm going back to college i'm gonna i'm gonna give it one more one more season then we'll see what happens after that and i think that would be the preference for all involved really fan base uh, coaching staff team all, all the above uh if you could spin the wheel and get one of those three dudes or, or a fourth or fifth option there however i do think you are you're really close to adding another you know, younger player to your team. Uh, I, I bet they end up with another guard type uh, fairly soon. Um, and that's just a, a hunch. And so I just wanted to make sure that we're, and, and then after that, if, if you were to get a big and another guard, I'm, I'm not, I'm not sure what else is, is left. Uh, I think that, you know, it was a lot was made out of Trezarian white that went to, he chose TCU over, over Texas Tech. Yeah, he visited here. I don't think there was ever a, an actual offer made uh, or anything like that. I think that the the word you get was he showed up uh, on his visit. He was a lot he, – he wasn't near what he was listed at height, height-wise. height I'll say that. And so I think uh, – I don't think you ever pursued that, uh, you know, seriously uh, because of that. And so he ends up at TCU. But I don't know if there's any other – Irons in the fire, but I bet you end up with a big and a younger guard here, and uh, then we'll kind of see what happens. And that would just it technically would leave you with two spots remaining. I bet you're for sure holding one of those on purpose. Yeah. And then I guess you know maybe you know we'll, we'll see if something else were to arise or you were to have a spot or or whatever. But that's my portal update. It's exhausting. It's confusing. <laughs> it changes a lot. It's tricky to talk about because it, it does maneuver around so quickly. 
So while we may be calm, like that duck on the pond, we're paddling like crazy underneath too, trying to, you know, <laughs> figure out what's happening and what's going on. And, oh, yeah. you know, all those kinds of things. And so, and sometimes, you know, you, 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 you don't, you, you can only go with info you have at the time. Let's put it that way. Yeah, and as as I've said before, you're scratching me right where I itch. So down below my pond level is a, a leg kicking like a cocker spaniel right now because I'm just having <laughs> such a good time chewing on all these nuggets. When I thought I was out, they pulled me back in. So glad to be pulled back into some of these conversations with some of the names that you mentioned, and we'll be keeping a close eye on those in days to come. So uh, make sure you're joining us once again on the other side and get subscribed if you're not already on YouTube or anywhere you get podcasts. So you don't miss a thing. Chris, appreciate the time as always, man. Enjoyed it. Yes, sir. Uh, and uh, yeah, tr trust your uh, trust your head coaches, folks. Uh, your head coaches uh, are under good leadership. They know what's going on in the sport that they're coaching and the way that the winds are shifting with the, all of this stuff. Uh, and, and uh, you know, just again, as Grant would say, hey, man, just trust us. We know what we're doing. I, I got you, coach. I know you know what you're doing, and I do trust you. So uh, <laughs> I, I know everybody's ready to open some presents. Uh, maybe, maybe they are. Uh, That's right. Maybe they're getting wrapped up right now. Who knows? We'll see. All right. That sounds good. A good way to. Uh, Christmas analogy, it. like in mid-May. Uh, I'm I don't here know. for it. Silly. Yeah. <laughs> I'm here yeah. for it. I uh, appreciate all of you being out there for us throughout the week. Uh, for Chris, I'm Casey, and we hope to see you back for the next round on Locked On Texas Tech.